Hello everybody, it's Hunters and welcome to the lore video. So in today's video for preparation for the expansion coming out in a couple days, I have assembled five new decks, and when I say new, I mean that they do not involve uh decks that have already been made and just like a one card difference. Like I'm not making a Poro deck and throwing in one different like the one new Poro card, right? Or like throwing in like an assembly bot Draven deck and throwing in like the new five cost, the five attack card. Like I'm not doing that, right? These, these are new decks. First off on the new deck list, we are looking at Lurk. So this is my prototype Lurk deck. We are using new champion Rek'Sai and Pike along with ancient prep preservarium for our landmarks. The point of this deck is going to be like an aggro Lurk deck. So we got our three of the Sharklings, three Xerxai Hatchlings, and then we got our two cost units here, and we are basically just aiming to throw a bunch of Lurk, get Lurk every turn, or as close to every turn as we can, use things like Snapjaw Swarm to try and hit Lurk on our opponent's turns. And ensuring that we have Lurk units at the top of our deck, being that we need to Lurk. So Lurk, if you have a Lurker at the top of your deck, when a unit with Lurk attacks, you then get plus one to all your Lurk units. Plus one attack. So we are really trying just to farm up attack. So we have like this one, two that if it attacks, it could potentially become a two, two. And then the next time we attack, it becomes a three, two, and then a four, two and five, two, right? So we're trying to just keep getting increasing amounts of attack with this deck and using things like Bone Skewer to make sure we have Lurkers at the top of our deck, as well as things like Call the Pack to generate more Lurkers. And again, it puts a card top of our deck, which can help us with ensuring that all of our attacks trigger Lurk. Um, so for win conditions, besides just attacking with a bunch of things that in get increasingly more attack, we have Zerareth, the Under Titan. This is in a big unit, 5 mana, but if it has 8 or more power, it gets Fearsome, Overwhelm, and Spell Shield when it attacks. So we get a bunch of attack from all the lurking. This thing then gets super scary, getting Overwhelmed, Fearsome, and Spell Shield. It is a win condition for us. As well, Rek'Sai, when Rek'Sai gets leveled... When Rek'Sai gets leveled, Rek'Sai gets overwhelmed. So Rek'Sai can also be a win condition for us. Rek'Sai also generates a lot more attack for us and for the deck. So very nice on that front. Can be very good to win. Uh, we got Pike. Pike is like a... Well, needs... Yeah, let me start again. We got Pike. Pike needs attack from the Lurk keyword. He has very low attack stat normally. But when he gets leveled up, as we see from... When I kill an enemy, I strike the weakest enemy. So we're going to be using that for Pike to wipe the board. For that to happen, he needs lots of attack. And Lurk helps greatly with that. So we're kind of getting this aggro mid rangey setup with all these Lurk cards constantly attacking with Lurk things just to get bigger and bigger units for our finisher in the form of Rek'Sai or for Zerareth uh, the Under Titan. And as well as if we don't have a dominant board state, we can try and wipe the board with a Pike or Jawfish, which says play effect each Lurker ally strikes a random enemy. So very good at board removal and taking control of the board and Pike and that go hand in hand. And so it's a pretty simple deck. It's I think the, the strategy will come out of when to use things like Bone Skewer and when to call the pack and trying to always ensure like trying to get rips Rek'Sai at the top of your deck because Rek'Sai when it lurks it gets bonus attack to everything so um I think the most of the skill involved this deck will be like just trying to play around having things at the top of your deck for the keyword to work but other than that it seems like a very solid aggro mid -range, mid -range, blah, blah, mid range list so that'd be deck one and I will also say for all the decks that I'm showing off right now these are by no means like like the final version, right? I have not played any of these. Obviously, not had a chance to play test any of these decks. These are all brand new concepts. Maybe not brand new concepts, but all like, you know, new decks to play with that will get played with when the expansion comes out. So these are all very, very rough. As in order to make a proper deck, you do need to play around with it. Second up on our list is a Misfortune Shivana deck. So this deck basically says that, okay, Misfortune is really, really good at attacking when, when attacking. And Shivana is also good when attacking. So let's throw them together. Um, same thing with like Quinn. You can do this with Quinn too. I just like Shivana. Quinn works because she is Scout. But Shivana works because she's better. So yeah. So this deck looks similar to a Scout deck. Except we are putting in cards. 
a lot of rally effects and a new snap jaw swarm which basically acts which gets a free attack which gets uh misfortune's ability proccing and same thing with crackshot corsair but we're also using grizzled rangers for the scout same reason for misfortune and blinding assaults for the scout as well and we also have a lot of rally effects we have a citrus courier two of them for rallies we got two playful tricksters for rallies we got two relentless pursuits for rallies so we also we have a lot of rally effects in addition just to the normal attacks the free attacks that we get from like snapjaw swarm and grizzled ranger and the hope is that so like the ideal combo now y'all running three of a siren because more misfortunes uh, Shivana can be replaced with Quinn because Quinn's level up obviously works with all the things that aren't like rally effects, right? Shivana's thing is only when she attacks, she only gets the perk as opposed to other stuff. So could definitely replace Shivana with Quinn, but I just like Shivana better. So that's what we're doing right now. Anyway, ideal combo is like misfortune. So like hired gun on two, misfortune, or sorry, crack shot, say crack shot, uh, hired gun, misfortune on three, right? With misfortune on three, you attack with the hired gun on two. You then proc misfortune one, proc crash shot, crack shot corsair. Turn four, you double snap jaw swarm. And now misfortune's at three a hits. Then turn five, you summon grizzled ranger. Grizzled ranger then goes in, gets misfortune upgraded on four. Now misfortune is now upgraded and she does a three attack burst or three damage burst. And then on turn five, or not on turn five, and then on attack number five, grizzled ranger will be able to attack again because of its scout. So you'll get two procs of Misfortune, and then you pretty much win from there. That's the ideal combo. Be really nice to pull off. But overall, just a lot of rally effects and a lot of ways to try and level up Misfortune. I think it'll be fun. Deck number three, Elnux. So Elnux were once very good. And then Riot nerfed it into non-existence. So now... They made a volunteer Elnook. When I'm summoned, create a random Elnook in the top six cards of your deck. That pairs very well with Troop of Elnooks, which for the top six cards in your deck, summon each Elnook and shuffle the rest into your deck. So it just summons a bunch of things if they're the top six cards of your deck. So we're really want to just make a bunch of volunteer Elnooks, play a lot of them, and we're summoning a lot of them. And through summoning a lot of them, they create more cards in the top six cards of your deck, which allows Troop of Elnooks to just summon a lot of things at once. And that's basically most of the point of this deck. We got Practical Perfectionist to create more copies of our Volunteer Elnux. Or for Bull Elnux or anything like that. Counterfeit Copies for more copies. Iter of Improvement for more copies. Time Trick because it's a neat drawing card. It can be very helpful. And then uh, It That Stares and Buried in Ice. Not sure how good this combo will play out in the Elnux deck. But I just think it's good for stalling. It's a good board removal tool. Helps out a lot on that front. And we got two pack mentality. So pack mentality is a very underrated, I think, uh, like win condition card because I don't know, maybe not underrated. It's like it's pretty accurately rated, and that's kind of bad. It requires you to have a board full of big things already for this to be meaningful. And if you have a board of big things, in most cases, you're winning. But not in this case because we can, because of troop of Elnux, we can uh, might have a chance of like summoning a lot of Elnux in one turn, like. Have like three or four that get summoned instantly right so we have the board but the thing is they don't have any other stats to actually make them combat like winnable so if we give them all plus two plus two and overwhelm for a turn we can suddenly get a very very scary end game board finally one howling abyss because we have no champion this deck so why not deck number three yetis so i love yetis yetis are super super fun they are the first deck I made. I crafted every Yeti I possibly could when I started this game. I love them. Great concept. So this deck is very similar to the Elnook deck. Running Counter for Copies, running Practical Perfectionist, running Time Tricks, all Impact Mentality, all in the name of trying to get as many Yetis on the field as possible, and then just overwhelming your opponent with Yetis. So we have our typical Yeti cards, Yearlings, Trappers, Ancient Yetis, but now... And, sorry, Avros and Outriders, which combos very well with Avros and Trappers. So, if you're wondering why we run Avros and Outriders when only 24 of the 40 cards in our deck are Freljord, it's because Trapper puts a Yeti in the top 3 cards of your deck. You then play an Outriders. You have such increased odds of hitting a Yeti with that, and then once you hit a Yeti, you get a 8-8 Overwhelm unit for one man. So, pretty good. 
Uh, but the other card is Abominable Guardian. So if you have two Yetis at round start, summon me from your hand and create a copy of me in your deck. So you can get a lot of free value from an Abominable Guardian and a lot of bonus power early in the game before your Yeti engines get going. And additionally, we have a card which no one runs ever because it's terrible. Call of the Wild. For the top four cards in your deck, draw each Yeti, Poro, and Elnook, place the rest into your deck. Now, if we can get enough Yetis in our deck from like counterfeit copies, from Practical Perfectionist, from all our yearlings, if we can get enough Yetis, Call of the Wild should be getting us like two Yetis a draw. Which, if you're spending three mana and drawing two one mana five fives, it's not bad. You know, it's not. So, that's the end of the deck. Again, I really hope Yetis will be somewhat viable because I really like Yetis. They're fun. Lastly, last deck on our five decks to try list is Lucian Draven with Field Promotion. Now, Field Promotion, the next time you play a unit this round, grant it Scout. Scout is very, very helpful on units of Quick Attack because most of the time when you attack with a unit of Quick Attack, your opponent doesn't want to block because they'll lose the trade. Now you can get two attacks off, which is basically forcing them to block or lose even more health. Really, really nice there. So we have Draven, who works really well with that, getting more axes. And when Draven levels up, he gets um, overwhelmed too. And Lucian, because if Lucian gets double attack and scout, that's like the equivalent of Lucian attacking four times in one turn, which is crazy. Not quite, but you know, it's crazy. Uh, similarly, Field Promotion can be played on a Senna. Um, you should like Lucian and Draven are our main target, sent as like a secondary target. But as you can see, this deck does not have too, too many units. Uh, it is more focused on getting like these two units buffed with like Kato the Arm, having Senna to get like Lucian's proc, and we got a little bit of early game here. But most of the rest of the deck is like Sharp Sight, Killing Strike, Sharp and Resolve. It's, it's combat tricks, it's survivability tricks, because we will just be running scout units into them. And just getting so much value and putting so much pressure on with that that we don't really need to spam the board what we need to do is make sure that our very important units survive so that is what we're doing here uh i think scout be very very good with draven lucian i think riven and zed are all very good options for it uh like any unit with quick attack or that can get to a quick attack very very solid even like shivana it will probably be good with units like that so very excited to use this more the first deck i want to try with this is this one lucian draven but you know i i definitely can see better possibly better uh decks being made with this in the future either way very excited for it but yeah this is five new decks to try for the upcoming expansion and don't worry i will post all of these decks in the video description so you can take a look at them and if i didn't mention it before these are pre-Echo. I'm recording this on Monday after the last set of cards came out, but uh, the last set of extra cards came out. And then on Tuesday, Echo gets revealed, but I'm not recording this on Tuesday. So these are five decks to build before Echo. I will definitely make a video on all the decks that I'm making with Echo, but that'll probably be post expansion. Uh, by the way, Echo, one of my favorite all-time champions in League. I have him as my like YouTube picture is me standing with echo someone drew for me so i really like echo and i'm gonna try to fit him into like literally everything i can bad good doesn't matter i'm gonna play a ton of echo so i'll have an entire video just dedicated to <laughs> decks about echo but in the meantime uh also going to try these decks out as well that will do it for today's video if you like the video please you know leave me a comment tell me what decks you're looking forward to um and yeah i'll see you after the expansion peace